everyone. This is Erin from the DNA Learning Center. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day today. I'm here to talk with you about two processes that happen in cells that are essential for life. They are transcription and translation. I'm going to draw for you over here some DNA. And we're going to talk about the information in that DNA and how that information is used by cells. So I do like to think of DNA as being very similar to a cookbook. The recipes, if you will, in DNA carry information. These recipes we refer to as genes. Genes are information that can be used by the cell to make mRNA or proteins. Proteins are used or have the potential to influence or impact various traits in organisms. And what we'll be focusing on today is how do you get from information to an actual product? So let's take a look. I have some images here for you today. What I'll be discussing is what we would consider happening in a eukaryotic cell, so a cell that contains a nucleus. Uh, these processes also happen in prokaryotic cells, uh, but prokaryotic cells won't have a nucleus. So if you can just imagine that as we're going through, that might help you along, but generally the processes are the same. So here, in this area, I have drawn just a nucleus in the cell, and that's where the DNA would be. Transcription happens in eukaryotic cells in the nucleus, and transcription in general is how we take information in DNA and use it to make a molecule which we call mRNA. Once that mRNA molecule is made by the cell, that molecule will leave the nucleus and come out into this cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, a ribosome structure will form and that information in the mRNA will be read by the cell and the cell will put together or build a protein. This process out here where we go from mRNA to an actual protein is called translation. What I'd like to do is just take a closer look at what happens in each of these processes. So first, let's discuss transcription. The way that I think about transcription is if you guys have ever heard of a scribe, a scribe is somebody who would write things down. So transcription essentially is how the cell will write down or copy the information from the DNA. So here's my DNA molecule right here, okay? And you'll see that in our DNA, we have on the outside, we have a sugar phosphate backbone on both sides. And all I mean by that is we have our sugars and phosphates alternating. Attached to our sugars in the center of the molecule will have our bases. So these could be adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. And we know that the bases pair up in a specific way. What I mean by that is that A pairs up with T and G pairs up with C. So if you're taking a closer look at our image here, you'll see that if I have a G on one side, I'd have a C on the other. If I have an A on one side, I'd have a T on the other. We're going to be talking about RNA, which is a molecule that in many ways is very similar to DNA, but there definitely are differences. For example, the bases are a little bit different in RNA. I have over here for you some images. RNA does have A's, it has C's, and it does have G's, however, RNA does not have T's, it does not have thymine. It has something else called uracil. So when we are building RNA molecules, you want to understand that if you have an A, it won't be paired with a T in RNA because there are no T's, it would be paired with a U. So just try to keep that in mind as we go through. This, what I have up here, is in a nucleus. That's how I'm drawing this. First thing that this cell would have to do if it wants to make a protein is it has to access the information in the DNA. So the way that I'll demonstrate this is that I will just open that up. Let me see if I can come out. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I've just opened that DNA up. This is the gene. So this is whatever the cell wants to use to make that protein. That's the recipe. 
the first thing this cell has to do is make a copy of that recipe. So over here, I have an A. So what do you think I would attach to that A to make a copy? I want to have the complement of that A. If I were building DNA, the complement of an A would be what? If I were building DNA, the complement of an A would be a T. However, I'm not building DNA, I'm building RNA. So the complement here would actually be that U, that uracil. So what I'll do, let's see if I have these ready to go. I'm going to make these a little bit easier to copy. So I'm looking to put a U there. I'm just going to take my U here, okay? And I'll have to flip that to make it fit. There we go. All right? And what I can do is just complete that strand. So if I have a T, what would match up with a T in the RNA? That would be an A. So I'll bring that over. Just flip that. Oh, just flip that. And you get the idea. Let's maybe do two more. If I had a G, what would I pull for the RNA to make that complement? A G would be attached to a C. And you see, I am acting like the cell where I'm building this RNA right here. Let's do one more. I've got the C, so that means I would do the G as a complement. And I could go all the way through and build my RNA. Remember, I said there's different types of RNA. So what I'm building right here is mRNA, or messenger RNA. Once I've completed that strand, that RNA is not going to stay in the nucleus. It's going to leave the nucleus, and it's going to come out into the cytoplasm. So here, let's see if I could just make this bigger for us. Okay. So here I've got the cytoplasm. This is just the nucleus, so you realize that the, the mRNA has come out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm. And at this point, I would consider this our translation process. This is where the cell takes the mRNA, so that's the message, and uses it to build the protein. There will be a ribosome that can kind of put itself together or build itself out here in the cytoplasm. Ribosomes are actually also made of some RNA. They're made of rRNA or ribosomal RNA. So cool. What will happen is that once that ribosome construct kind of is formed, the mRNA will be fed through that ribosome and the ribosome will attempt to read that information. The mRNA is going to be read in blocks of three or what we call codons. So the cell is going to push through like this. We have our block of three. And now there are another type of RNA. There's something called tRNA or transfer RNA. And these transfer RNAs are just floating out in the cell. Transfer RNAs have anticodons. They also have blocks of three nucleotides right there. They have those blocks of three, but they also have amino acids on them. The anticodon on the tRNA corresponds or relates to the amino acid that it has. Remember that the information in DNA is to make proteins. Proteins are just chains of amino acids. So this copy of the DNA, so our mRNA, is really just a recipe for a chain of amino acids. Right here, I know it's upside down, but hopefully you can read it. I have a sequence of here, I've got an A, a U, and a G. These transfer RNAs will kind of pop on and see if they are the correct match for that sequence right there. And if they're not, they can just pop right off. So let's think about this. If I have a G right here, what would be the complement in RNA? A G would correspond with a C. What about a U? A U would have an A, so we have C, A, and then what about that A? Remember? That A would correspond with a U. Just to write it down, because I'll get confused if I don't write it down. A G would have what? That would have a C. And then the U would have an A, and the A would have a U. So what I'm looking for right here is these are going to pop on, see if they're a match. 
I'm looking at the anticodon sequence is complementary. And here, whoop, you see that? I have a CAU, CAU, that would be a match. Let me just get that out of there for you. What will happen is when the correct transfer RNA pops into place, let's see if I can do this, the amino acid will be dropped off and that portion will just pop off. At that point, the mRNA will be pushed through to the next codon sequence, so the next group of three, and the transfer RNAs will try their luck again. We'll see if they are the correct one. When the correct transfer RNA goes into place, it will drop off its amino acid and we will build a growing chain of amino acids. When we get to the end, there will actually be a sequence to tell the ribosome that it's time to stop doing this process and the protein or the chain of amino acids that has been built will be able to come off and the cell can then use that to fold it and put it in a specific shape so that the protein is ready to be used by the cell. I've given you guys some links in our website so that you can watch additional videos, but I hope that this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please let us know, and I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.